The sea has taken many lives from the river entrances and bar harbours around New Zealand. The biggest single disaster happened here in the Manukau Heads in 1863. HMS Orpheus struck the bar and although the weather wasn't that bad, it broke up within a few hours when the flood tide set in. Out of 259 people on board, 189 lost their lives. It's still New Zealand's worst maritime disaster. This is the approach to the Kaipara Bar, further north. In the early days, wooden scows like the Te Aroha operated over the bar, bringing new immigrants and their stores in and carrying kauri timber out to the growing cities of New Zealand and Australia. Many of these vessels, and many lives, were lost on the bar. But recent statistics are hardly anything to be proud of either. In the ten years or so before this video was made, recreational boaties had bar crossing incidents here. In five of them, somebody died. Over that same 10-year period, commercial fishermen were involved in bar crossing incidents here and there were 11 fatalities. Professionals may cross the bar more often than amateurs and in much more difficult conditions, but nevertheless twice as many of them died over that 10 years and a disproportionate number of incidents, especially fatal, happened here in Westport and Greymouth. It's important to keep this in perspective. Every year there are thousands of successful bar crossings, many of them in difficult weather. But even one fatality is one too many. Eleven in ten years, though, is a real worry. For the fact is that upon investigation, many of these incidents, and others where nobody actually died, were avoidable. People did things that they shouldn't have, and or they didn't do things that they should. And if you are truly professional, you know that. One thing that all Crossing the Bar stories have in common is that at that moment, you and your vessel are most at risk especially in between the tip heads, which is the very last place you want anything to happen. But events there often start further out, and incidents often grow from simple beginnings. And yeah, we were lucky that we kept our steering. Uh, everything just kept going as normal till we were virtually in between the tip heads, and that's when uh, the rudder got fouled up and we started having a few problems. The top bridle, which was just a length of wire and it had a short length of chain, probably a metre chain and a G-clamp, uh, got entangled in the rudder and when we got in between the tip heads, so yeah, it just um, seized up the steering. We had no steering at all. We're very lucky that the Corsair's got two engines, so with two engines we managed to keep her off the rocks. Absolutely within the best tradition of getting yourself out of trouble. 
But all incidents on the bar happen close to shore. Yeah, we were already in the river. We'd, we'd come over the bar earlier. So it's almost impossible to prevent other people becoming involved, widening the impact of any incident. When we sat in the river, we waited for him to come in, but when he, he um, wore the big wave, well, we weren't aware that there was a problem until afterwards when he called me. At that stage, we turned back down the river and headed towards him and had the, the crew preparing uh, tow lines. Cascade of the rescue, see if you get here in time. Bad situation. The cascade was on the way back down the river to help us out. But with the uh, work in the engines ahead and astern, we managed to chop off the wire and free the rudder and got up the river under our own power. By the time I got down beside him, he called me back to let me know that they'd cleared the, the wires from the propeller and they're underway again. So we let them go ahead of us up the river and follow them up. Everything sort of happened so fast by the time I realised that we were having a problem um, until we actually got back out into the river and, and got our shit together, so to speak. It, there wasn't a great deal of time to reflect on it at all. It was happening. It was just, it just happened so fast, really. This reaction, that when things are turning to custard, you're too busy to think about it, is another common thread through bar crossing stories. Many skippers find that it takes a while before they start working through the event and sorting out their thoughts. Um, it was a letdown on my part. I was pretty pissed off of myself actually. Uh, I have to confess that uh, my boss wasn't all that happy with the way things went on the bar that day. Yeah, they, they weren't overly impressed. They were happy we'd come in. We were full of fish. They were happy about that. But um, certainly they think we could have done it with a bit more style, I think. It was quite a big sea on the bar that day and I think it was, we probably both underestimated the size of the swells before we, we came in. But you know, that was quite a few years ago and I think we've all learned a lot from the likes of that, that event. I suppose everybody was a bit younger and more bulletproof those days. I suppose everybody thinks differently but it's always a relief to get out of there. It's probably mentally fairly stressful. I know myself, I've had a the odd sleepless night after a bad crossing. Just through uh, nerves, I suppose, it, it just shakes you up a bit, you know. 